we will go ahead and get started. So good afternoon. My name is Sarah Beth Doherty and I am the communications lead for Parallel Flight. I want to welcome you all today to today's webinar, which is hosted by Parallel Flight Technologies and Genesis AI. So today you'll hear from two tech startup CEOs, Joshua Resnick of Parallel Flight Technologies and Archil Chesvili of Genesis AI, as they discuss their industries and share how their technology can be integrated to solve some of the world's biggest challenges. This will be an interactive webinar and we invite you all to participate. Please feel free to use the chat feature at any time to ask questions and we'll do our best to answer as many as possible during the Q&A portion of the webinar. And if we can't get to your questions today, we'll do our best to answer them via email as soon as possible. I'm going to drop links to our website and Genesis AI's website into the chat now for your reference. And with that, I will turn it over to Joshua and Archil for their introductions. Hey, good morning, everybody, and good afternoon, depending on which coast you are calling in from. Uh, it's really exciting to be here. Uh, this is going to be a great conversation. Um, as many of you know, uh, my company, Parallel Flight Technologies, is building heavy lift drones for a lot of different applications. Um, uh, the genesis of our, country, of, of our company was wildfire. Uh, my home uh, was almost destroyed in this year's wildfire season. It was almost destroyed in the 2017 uh, wildfire season in California. And that's when we kicked off Parallel reinvented uh, drone powertrain from the bottom up, uh, worked with uh, Department of Interior, Forest Service, CAL FIRE to come up with solutions for uh, unmanned logistics for firefighters, as well as controlled burn solutions, and eventually for spot fire suppression with the goal of uh, really changing the game on wildfire. Uh, in the process of building this company and technology, we've connected with a lot of customers in uh, multiple industries, and I can speak more to that a little bit later. So we are a heavy lift autonomous uh, logistics solution company. And uh, with that intro on my side, um, I will turn it over to uh, Archil, uh, who will introduce himself and his company. So uh, I'm glad to be here and glad to be having this conversation with Archil. Thank you, Joshua. Thank you, Sarah. This will be a fabulous conversation. So really excited for this and thanks everyone for taking time to join us and uh, engage in our discussion. So real brief about uh, what we do at uh, Genesis AI. So origin of Genesis AI is when my, me and my co-founders realized what is the biggest problem in artificial intelligence space. So currently, AI models are developed and operating in silos. They are operating and developed in a closed environment. There is no easy connectivity among AI tools. For example, there's no easy way for AI tools to trade services, learn from each other, and exchange data. It's sort of paradoxical that AI, which is all about gathering as much data as possible, there's no learning happening among AI tools. So one AI model is not learning from another AI tool. So me and my co-founders teamed up to solve this problem by creating a constitution, basically a set of rules that specify how distinct AI tools can work together. For example, how you can have speech recognition tool working with translation tool to produce speech translation. And our vision is to create a platform where people will be able to access high quality AI production services and access also have an ability to also monetize their AI products and services. And our vision is to connect hundreds of thousands of AI models to potentially lay foundation for creation of artificial general intelligence. And I'm sure me and Joshua will have interesting conversation about it too. This is a brief summary of what we do and really excited to see uh, where we will go from here. So Archil, to kick off the conversation, I think it would be really great for our, uh, our audience to understand a little bit more about what artificial intelligence is. Like we hear the word AI, and I think some of us immediately conjure up images of Terminator or, uh, you know, some 
some kind of terrifying uh, dystopian future. But when you, when, what is artificial intelligence and how is it distinct from things like artificial general intelligence? These are like different terms that are floating around that people hear. Can, can you draw uh, what, can you, can you explain what those terms mean? For sure, for sure. This is a great question, Joshua. So the way I think about artificial intelligence is a sophisticated, sophistical model. It's not really, there's no magic in what there is no crazy computer science in what. It's a very, very sophisticated, sophistical model where you don't need to tell computer what to do. You don't need to program computer step-by-step -step guidelines of what to do, right? Then you try to feed the data and then let the computer do the rest of the work, basically, in terms of doing whatever you want them to do, right? So when it comes to AGI, artificial general intelligence, where we would like to get how many, whatever years it might take, right? Is when one AI model can do not just a narrow thing, but also can do multiple different things. For example, currently all the AI tools are very narrow. They can do only single things. They need, to, they cannot easily adapt to new environments. For instance, Let's say um, AI that can beat a world-class player in chess, right? But right. that AI cannot easily start beating world-class poker player, right? So right. <laughs> this is a big problem. And our goal is to uh, transition from narrow to general AI. <clears throat> Interesting. And uh, Joshua, we can continue this conversation, but I also love to hear from your side. Uh, where do you think uh, drone industry to be going? And also, what's, uh, what are some of the most exciting uh, developments and trends in the industry? And where are you guys coming specifically? Yeah, for sure. So, you know, the, the drone industry is growing uh, very rapidly worldwide. Uh, it's being primarily used right now for data acquisition, uh, and it's being used heavily in construction in land management, uh, in, in agriculture, you know, people are flying drones over fields and literally understanding on a plant by plant basis, the health of their crop and then spraying, uh, you know, whether it's fertilizer uh, or uh, insecticide exactly on the plant that needs it. So you don't have to waste as much material. It's much better for the environment. That's just an example. Um, and you know, everything from search and rescue to construction, many, many industries, the power industry, you know, the, the utility industries are using drones to inspect all of their power line infrastructure. And going forward f five years, what we're going to see is instead of uh, drones just doing those kind of tasks with a pilot right you know, at the site of the inspection, they're going to be flying beyond line of sight autonomously powered by AI systems that are going to be developed uh, and are being developed right now to do those kind of inspection tasks um, autonomously. In addition to that, and this is where parallel really comes in, we're going to see a lot of heavy lift logistics applications. There are uh, companies with different technologies, ourselves being one of them, uh, developing platforms to move things around. In our case, we're moving supplies for firefighters. Uh, we're, we're moving, uh, you know, I'll talk a little bit more of the other applications we're doing, but some construction applications, moving heavy equipment from the bottom of a wind turbine to the top of a wind turbine so somebody can actually service it without having to carry that equipment up and down, replacing helicopters in a lot of applications that are extremely dangerous. Um, so as the industry moves forward, we're going to see bigger drones, we're going to see more autonomous drones, and we're going to see swarms of drones doing operations. So there's, those are some of the things that are coming down uh, the pipeline. Um, in, so I'll, I'll kind of flip the question. Where, what do you see the state, uh, what, what is the state of the AI? I mean, I guess I could call it an industry, but it's also kind of a, a field of science. What is the state of AI right now? And where do you see that in five years? For sure, for sure. So I think the biggest uh, development we see right now, which uh, I think we are at the forefront of this, is 
how you can have AI models to interact with each other, right? Because mm -hmm. I guess people are starting to realize that people in the AI industry have been reinventing the wheel a hundred times. There are hundreds of speech recognition tools, hundreds of natural language processing tools, and there's no way for people to uh, use each other's tools to improve the oral ecosystem. And I think that's the most exciting development. And we believe that will be also foundation for next level of artificial intelligence, right? Because the analogy I like to talk about is how human body functions. You have different body parts responsible for different things, right? You can, I can flex my muscle, I can eat and so on, right? And all of them are connected. So I think the most exciting part is you have all these expert AI tools out there. So if you connect all of them, you can do literally craziest things in place that person can't even imagine, right? So, and I think also interesting application, Joshua, is AI drones, right? So maybe we can talk a little bit about how autonomous drones are now, whether they are mostly GPS controlled by someone else or can they operate independently? And uh, also where, uh, how drones treat some of the outlier cases, right? When yes. it has not seen some things that he's about to see. Yeah, uh, th th those are really good questions. I mean, this, I, and that's really why we're having this webinar, right? It's like this, this real strong intersection of these two types of technologies. So right now, you know, there's different, different companies with different applications are kind of at different levels. So if you look at like Skydio, for example, they're building essentially an autonomous selfie drone. So the drone has an AI uh, system that's been trained to follow, uh, follow the, the subject and film them. And it can, it's amazing. Like it can fly through woods, it can fly, uh, it, it can create, make artistic camera angles while you're riding a bicycle, you know, through a complex trail. It can avoid people. It's, it's a very intelligent system that's been developed. But again, the, the task is relatively limited there. It's, it's, a, it, it's a, a filming platform, right? It's a cinematography platform. Um, of course, they're expanding that to ins some inspection applications and um, you know, partnering with other companies to do, for example, uh, to, to, to track uh, boxes in a warehouse and things like that. Um, when you think about drones in general, they, it, it's a lot easier to fly a drone than it is to drive a car. So for example, at Tesla, we're, you know, and for the audience, um, I, I worked at Tesla for four years prior to coming to, to founding Parallel. I was the, um, uh, the, the lead uh, electrical engineer um, on the Tesla semi-truck program. And you know, the lesson at Tesla was that it's that 1% case that's so hard. You know, it's those at what we call an edge case where you can train your AI to do 99% of driving, but it's that 1% that is really, really hard. For drones, the situation's similar, but different in the sense that there's just a lot less stuff in the air than there are on the roads. So it's, it's a lot easier to train an autopilot. Most jets that you go fly in, they're, they're being flown essentially autonomously. The pilot's there, um, taking care of things, but the jet can, can really fly itself because again, it's just a lot simpler to navigate that three-dimensional space than it is, you know, the complex road system. Um, our drones right now, and I'll, I'll wrap this up because there's a whole conversation to be had here. Uh, like our drones right now, we fly a GPS pattern. It's all by GPS. And it essentially it's like a 3D printer, right? It's not doing anything super intelligent, but we want to add intelligence so that eventually it can, you know, come down through trees, for example, and land, you know, to drop off payloads. So that's where the, there's this big intersection with, with AI learning so that we can take those LIDAR maps, those computer vision maps, infrared, and bring all that data together and use it, you know, for different applications like identifying a, a spot fire for wildfire suppression. We're working with a group out of Spain right now specifically for that purpose, to identify um, 
you know, hot spots and wildfire. So there's lot, lots of different um, intersection there. But I think, I, I, I guess I'm, I'm a little concerned about AI, you know, it, in the sense that we talk about artificial general intelligence, we're talking about something that, you know, has human level intelligence potentially so at some point in the future. I know we're not there now, but how the, it seems like the potential for that to get out of control and become dangerous could be a real thing. Like, what's, what is your thought about that? Like, it's, I, I think as much as we don't have like Terminator right now, I can almost see it on the horizon. Like, how do we avoid that kind of thing? For sure. That's a great question. And before I go there, a quick question about uh, your thoughts about drones. I'm sure people will be interested. For example, the case of uh, how drone potentially avoids uh, birds, right? Because yeah. birds are flying. <laughs> you can hit the <laughs> bird. And if it's a big bird, uh, like eagles, then it might completely crush the drone, right? Yeah. Depending on the size of the drone, right? So how the drones uh, do that? Uh, it's allowed to hear your thoughts about that. That's one. And uh, second, when it comes to uh, AGI and artificial general intelligence, the way I think about this is uh, artificial intelligence is a tool that can be used uh, for good things and bad things too. Uh, for example, you know, telephones. You can use telephone to uh, talk to your mom or you can use it to call in you know, a school and say that there is a uh, big, big problem there, right? right? For example, there's a bomb, right? right? It can be used, but just because it can be used in the wrong way, does not mean that we should sort of be scared of this technology. But I think what's most important is to have some sort of safeguards in place. An analogy I like to bring is if a child grows up by seeing lots of violence around it and lots of lots of negativity, there is high chance that uh, this kid might do some violence himself, right? Because it's what he has been surrounding with. Similarly, if AI models will be trained by lots of hate and lots of lots of bad things, so there is a higher likelihood that something bad potentially might happen. So I think doing some sort of safeguards and the world agreeing on some both ethical and practical aspects of AI is extremely important. Is some of that work being done right now? Very, very limited. You know, United Nations is talking about it. Uh, we have big countries, mostly U.S. and China, leading uh, creation of the standards. Uh, but now almost everything is sort of fair game in terms of every country and company is really, really trying to break through and uh, mm -hmm. become successful. So um, people are pretty much doing whatever they want uh, because it's fear of, you know, AGI potentially harming us is maybe uh, not super, super deeply ingrained now, but it's probably will become increasingly more important maybe five, 10 years from here. Yeah, I know, I know, for example, Elon Musk is working on uh, trying to develop uh, sensible regulations around artificial intelligence, uh, you know, for those reasons. And I think, you know, that's kind of another interesting synergy, right? Like, uh, the drone industry also has regulations around it. Um, and, you know, these FAA, you know, the FAA has an incredible track record. If you think about the fact that stepping on a, uh, a commercial airliner is safer than stepping in your car. Right. And like, mm -hmm. that's the kind of level of safety that we want our skies to have. So, you know, we're, we're finding uh, that the, the, the regulatory uh, framework is is sensible and that also uh, it's moving forward and allowing for unique applications like beyond visual line of sight uh, over 55 pound operation um, you know with certain uh, exemptions that, that can be acquired for different applications especially around public safety so that's been kind of a, a you know not not a hindrance to us as a company um, I guess you know when I think about the future you know, we want AI to be something that, that helps us. What kind of applications do, do you see for artificial intelligence in the future? How, how do you see uh, AI changing our future? Uh, uh, you know, obviously, hopefully for the better. What are the applications there? Well, for sure, uh, Joshua. So I see uh, applications around uh, speech, 
text and vision. So traditional technology is great with numbers, you know, traditional technology is great with uh, X type of data, but not with speech, text, and uh, vision image type data, right? So a AI can bring huge uh, benefits when it comes to uh, understanding uh, the language, uh, uh, interpreting the language, doing summaries, making predictions, providing insights, uh, and so on, right? So we human span probably maybe 80% of all, all the time analyzing what someone is saying and talking also and reading and writing. Just imagine if we can have a sort of supercomputer supplementing and augmenting us. It can be a complete game changer, right? So, so I see huge benefits there. And also when it comes to improving automation, right? For example, manufacturing or self-driving cars. And you are expert in that, Joshua. So self-driving cars is also great. Mm -hmm application of AI, right? And um, one interesting question is, uh, it's sort of obvious that the US is leading uh, when it comes to almost all things AI, China is sort of catching up. But I'm also curious in drone space, uh, who is leading, which country is leading, uh, and um, what uh, can the US do to, you know, be number one in the space? Yeah, uh, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, China is definitely the world leader in the drone space. Uh, there, there's a Chinese company for, I'm sure many of our audience is familiar with them, DJI. Uh, they, they have, I think, 80% of the commercial drone market in the United States. And there's been a lot of pushback against DJI. Um, you know, they, they were kind of caught red handed uh, gathering uh, intelligence data from from over the U.S. and you know there are several U.S. government agencies that have been using DJI drones that now are no longer allowed to, um, and this is pretty controversial because you know for example the Department of Interior was using uh, a, a large fleet of DJI drones to uh, work do work on wildfire and all of a sudden all those drones are grounded and they have to rebuild that entire fleet which is ex extremely expensive but you know, at the same time, it's a, it's it's an opening for U.S. drone companies to to begin expanding in the market. Um, so there's a huge push for U.S. drone companies. There's a bit, you know, uh, every every government contract we talk to, or every government agency we talk to about getting contracts with, you know, they they want to make sure: Are you using a Chinese flight controller or a U.S. made flight controller? And you know what what percentage of your drone is chinese made parts so we're we're committed as a company to building uh us made technology and uh you know you know becoming a leader in that heavy lift space which is good for us because we don't have to compete with dji all of dji's drones are 55 pounds and under and so we're differentiated right there by being in that heavy lift space um and obviously that, that may not be the case forever, but we want to use that, leverage that while we have it to, to become a leader in that space. Um, I guess that kind of, uh, I mean, there's, there's so much to talk about with, with AI. Uh, it's such an interesting field. I guess I want to understand like, what, what are your core strengths as a company uh, in the AI field? Because I, I can only imagine that it's a pretty crowded space. Mm -hmm. For sure, for sure. And uh, yes, yeah, so uh, the, I would emphasize a few things. Uh, first is uh, our approach to uh, building AI, which is very different from everyone else. The way people are trying to build, uh, for example, some of the sort of the next level of artificial intelligence uh, is by trying to rebuild the brain, you know, uh, which is almost impossible problem to do. We found a much more practical and we believe much more uh, effective way of trying to lay foundation for next day level AI, which is sort of crowdsourcing, gathering all the AI tools. It's the one platform and then connecting these AI tools with each other, same way as how different body parts are connected. That's a big differentiation and I mm -hmm. hope 
And I said, we will see whether we will be writing this or not, whether this is the best way to build it or not. So that's one thing. And another thing is team. Our team members say, what's the amount of experience in artificial intelligence? I was running AI company before. My co-founders have been doing AI for many, many years. My co-founder worked at Google before. And my another co-founder is completing PhD at Harvard right now. So this is a quick summary and a lot to ask also the same question, Joshua, what's what strengths that um, core strength the parallel technology has that is really differentiating and is a game changer for you guys? Yeah. Uh, I mean, our, our core strength as it is, you know, we also have a fantastic team here. Um, uh, we have interestingly a machine vision expert as one of our co-founders. Uh, and my other co-founder has drone expertise with the Navy uh, doing drone swarm uh, research as well as, you know, he was also a engineer in a nuclear sub. So that's, you know, the, the military background, which just brings a lot of discipline to everything we do as a company. And then myself with, uh, I'm really a powertrain guy and that's, that's what, you know, p powertrain and also a lot of um, uh, model aviation experience in the helicopter world. So kind of bringing that all together, reinventing powertrain, uh, looking at high efficiency systems. So, you know, for example, prior to Tesla, I was building high efficiency generator systems for uh, fishing boats in Alaska. So have you, uh, Archil, have you seen uh, uh, Alaska's Deadliest Catch? Have you ever watched that show? Yeah. Okay, so I, I know, like, those guys were my customers, right? Like, I knew wow. I worked on their boats uh, doing these high-efficiency systems, and then I, after that at Tesla doing uh, electrical engineering for the semi-truck program. And, and really, the, the thread there is high-efficiency uh, and, and first, first principles of physics. Like, how do you get the most out of whatever your, your you know, whether it's a battery or fuel source that you're using? Um, so team technology and then you know we also i would say a strength for our company is the relationships that we're developing with the agencies and customers that we're working with there's some really exciting things happening there um you know especially in the wildfire space uh working with the forest service we have a grant right now from the usda forest service is part of usda and we're working with a, a partner company that makes these this incredible device that drops dragon eggs, which are these balls that light on fire when they hit the ground to create backburns and controlled fire. And I, I think, you know, also that's an area where AI, I think, is going to play a really big role is quantifying the effectiveness of air operations on fire, which, you know, this is something that I've just learned. I'm sure our audience would be interested in this, that it is currently not really understood how effective different air operations are on mitigating fire. And by putting drones in the air with AI and, and machine vision uh, analyzing the operation, we're gonna learn a lot about what are the most effective ways to fight fire from the air and, and actually quantify it. You know, So I think that's gonna be a big application. Um, I, I definitely wanna uh, give time for our audience to ask questions. Uh, it's, you know, obviously both of our companies, Parallel Flight and Genesis AI are crowdfunding right now. And uh, by virtue of doing that, it allows us to interact with uh, a lot of uh, investors and potential investors. And I think it's just a, it's a great opportunity for everybody to learn from each other. Um, so at this point, uh, Sarah, can you uh, open up the, the Q&A? Yes, absolutely. And thank you guys. This has been such an interesting conversation and um, I'm so glad that we got together to do this. So one of the first questions that we got um, is about kind of how this webinar came to be, um, specifically asking, you know, if our two companies are working together um, and how you became connected. So I think everyone would like to know a little bit more about that. Sure. For sure, yeah, yeah. I, I will say that uh, there's so much synergy between drones and AI, and uh, I really hope that Joshua and I will actually do a actual, you know, implementation of how we can work together on this area. We have been having discussions about AI and drones, and uh, 
I am a big uh, fan of parallel technology, so I think we can we can do something beautiful in the future. Yeah, and, and the uh, specifically uh, a mutual friend of ours who uh, just happened to know both of us said, "Hey, you guys are really have a synergistic technology. I think you need to share that with your investor base." So that was kind of the the genesis, no pun intended, of this uh, particular webinar. Awesome. Um, another question we got was um, for you, Joshua, the, about um, whether or not Parallel Flight will be including AI in our platform. So um, Pierre asked, does Parallel plan to include AI in the platform with tweak setting depending on the application? He's specifically asking about experimental imaging um, for observation, and he just wants to understand, you know, what a company like Genesis could bring to that. So I'll answer the first part and then uh, you know, Ar Archiel, if you can answer the second part, I think it'd be good. So we, we don't have specific AI built into our uh, beta level aircraft that's under construction right now. Our flight controller will follow a specific GPS path. It can, it, there, and there's some intelligence in there in the sense that auto takeoff, auto land, but down the road, we are going to incorporate AI for image recognition, especially around uh, putting out spot fires. So like I said, we're already working. Um, right now, this individual is out of Spain, but he's going to be moving to the US. He's working with the um, uh, San Jose State University uh, Fire Sciences Program, and he's developed an AI platform for identifying and tracking the spread of wildfires. So we're going to be working with him to incorporate that into our technology. Um, Archie, what what else, what other applications there do you see? For sure. So, uh, uh, so we Genesis AI is mostly focused on the asset management space, and uh, direction application we have been researching is using AI and drones to get better idea of supply dynamics in commodities markets. For example. Uh, there are you know, hundreds of billions of dollars being trained in around oil and gas and so other futures, right? And understanding what the supply of oil or even supply of crops, right, is extremely important. So drones can be an ideal solution in this in terms of you apply AI to, uh, basically uh, drones and AI will work together to take pictures and then analyze these pictures, right, to get an understanding of how much, well, what's the, how many, how much soybeans we're gonna have? Is it, will this year be great or will this be disaster, right? So it just can be a way for, uh, for uh, our platform to give insights to investors much far ahead than, uh, it's, it's basically being predictive rather than focusing on the past, right? As numbers comes out, around supply, but usually too late, it's all already priced in, right? But if you can see that in real time, that can be game changer for investors. Yeah, definitely. Um, one question we had, um, it was specifically about aviators, but I think, we can, I think we can kind of expand on it for a variety of different um, applications. But the question was, how do aviators stay relevant in this new tech and drone world, given that drones and AI are replacing humans, I think it. I think that question goes, you know, far beyond aviation. So I'd love to get both of your perspectives on that. Yeah, I'll, I'll give the aviation perspective, uh, and I, I wanted to ask Archil the same thing because, you know, I I, I have my own opinions, but uh, I want to see what he thinks about kind of this this fear of, you know, replacing the human. Um, so from the aviation perspective. The, the, the tasks that we want to replace helicopters with are incredibly dangerous. And so for example, the, the Forest Service right now, they spend half a billion dollars a year drop, you know, doing controlled burns. A lot of that happens from helicopter. It's an incredibly dangerous mission. A lot of pilots have died over the past 10 years um, in that mission because the helicopters are flying low and slow. So uh, they, they're, they're pushing to um, have drones do those missions. And then there's plenty of other missions that can be done. Uh, th you know, hel the helicopter industry is not going away or being replaced by drones, but there are certain missions that are just so dangerous that um, you know, it's just better and safer to have drones do those missions. 
Um, <clears throat> and so I, I think that's, that's the kind of the key answer there is that companies want to pay for safety for their pilots so their pilots can, can then, you know, go be effective in, in other missions. Mm -hmm. For sure. And I'll, I'll take the second part. Uh, uh, so uh, when it comes to AI or replacing some of the jobs, uh, what I found is AI is replacing some of the jobs, but it's also creating lots of new jobs, right? Mm -hmm. For example, when uh, uh, car manufacturing started, people who were riding cars and horses lost jobs, right? And there was a huge percentage of population employed in riding horses and riding cars, right? But as a new technology came, it created hundreds of millions of different types of jobs, right? All related to the car manufacturing. You also need different roads, you need different supplies, the car parts, and so on, right? Or uh, think about, for example, uh, uh, influencer. Before, there were no such thing as YouTube influencers, right? Now, lots of people make money just by being YouTube influencer, right? So I think it is actually creating more jobs and it is replacing, but most importantly, it is automating some of the jobs that, uh, that uh, are ideally, you know, it might be better if technology did this, you know? For example, people would prefer to... Uh, um, do X versus Y, right? For so I prefer to uh, spend my time debating versus uh, uh, looking uh, to, in one direction for 24 hours and guarding that location, right? I don't think humans are born to uh, guard locations for 24 hours. Uh, so I think it's AI is good and drones are good. And uh, I think these two industries are complete game changers. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we got a question about um, our raises specifically um, that you both can answer. How long uh, you'll be planning to fundraise with your current rounds? Um, and then, you know, what your what your path out is. Like, do you see, do you have dreams of an IPO? Or, you know, where do you see the company going from a raise perspective? Sure. So our current raise, uh, it, it, it technically can stay open for up to a year. So... We'll see, it, it, you know, I, I imagine it's not going to be open that long. Uh, we've got some really exciting things coming down the pike and, you know, we'll, we'll close the raise once we've uh, raised our target amount. Um, <clears throat> and in terms of an exit, uh, the, you know, ultimately, yeah, I, I mean, we look, we're looking toward uh, an IPO down the road, but um, as an early stage company, my focus is build a product, get it on the market, grow the company, uh, and, and increase the value of the company. And then we can, you know, figure out that, that exit as, as it gets closer. Yes. So I would, uh, briefly mention about our current race. So we will likely be doing our current race for four more weeks. So a few weeks left, uh, and, uh, we already raised over 850,000 and, uh, I will for you, I'm sure there are a few of my investors in this uh, webinar and I would like to thank everyone for support and for joining and I'm sure together we are stronger, much stronger actually. And when it comes to talking about potential IPO, of course, no guarantees here, but our goal is to go very big and go very large. Mm -hmm. Our goal is to become single most valuable AI technology in the world, which I think will be one of the best things that will happen to humanity potentially if some creation of AGI will happen in addition to uh, some other things. So our goal is to go very big and this will be a few years of journey at least. So I really like to have as many participants as possible and I really appreciate uh, uh, people joining us, but of course, just saying again, this is startups, higher risk, higher rewards. Uh, investment can go to zero or it can also go through the moon too. Yeah. And I also wanted to thank all of our investors for uh, believing in us coming in and uh, supporting supporting our company as we plan to, to go big as well. Great. Um, we're, we're getting close to time, but we've got a couple more really great questions that I'd love to answer if you guys don't mind going over by a couple minutes. Sure. Um, we'll start with one um, for Archil. 
How do you see MSFT and AWS in your ecosystem? Are they potential competitors, laggards, or potential acquirers? The AI marketplace idea is fantastic, but marketplaces are difficult to build. How will you succeed in growing your marketplace? Yeah, this is an excellent question. So, yeah. uh, uh, so Microsoft and Amazon to, uh, t to tell to Zilla, to everyone, what companies we're talking about. So currently they have their tools built by developers and they almost exclusively for developers. So for example, if you go to a WS marketplace and if you are not technical, you probably will not be able to use any of those tools there right now. And our belief and our vision is AI for everyone. You should not need to be spending hundreds of hours how to learn coding to be able to use this beautiful technology. So we are building AI tools for both technical and non-technical people, most importantly. So that's one big difference. And second big difference is how we are crowdsourcing hundreds of thousands of potential AI tools is the future on our platform versus AWS S or Microsoft having just few tools on its platform, right? Developed by themselves. And uh, to be honest, we would like to take over these guys. We don't want to be acquired by this conference. We would like to uh, be bigger as companies and uh, we would like to take some of the AI powers they have and share it with the people. Great. All right, Joshua, this next one is for you. Um, the initial firefighting use case is great. What other cases and industries do you see Parallel expanding into in the future, given your unique capabilities? How big are these markets and what are you prioritizing? Great, great question. Um, so we, we're, you know, we still have a tremendous amount of traction in the fire space. Uh, that being said, we are, you know, the way, the way we're prioritizing customers is traction customers. We get obviously more requests than we can deal with. So we're trying to find those companies that um, have the biggest markets, have the most drone experience, and can scale quickly with the least uh, regulatory friction. So for example, there's a, a, a partnering company, we're gonna be announcing stuff about this over the next couple months um, in Australia that we're working with and they're doing power line construction. And right now they are, they're already using drones to do it. Uh, basically the drone pulls a lead line and then they pull the, the main cable after that and they assemble you know, these power lines with drones. And this is a very big, growing market because Australia, Europe, and even the United States, they're bringing on many renewables there. And these grids are, are being built, uh, you know, across these continents. So very scalable market. Uh, this company has found that the electric drones that they're using just don't have the pull, pulling power or the flight time to manage this. So they are, uh, basically firing their existing solution and hiring ours, and they'll probably be our lead customer. Um, even before we start fielding stuff for fire, though that's in the works as well. So uh, we kind of bucket that into the industrial logistics uh, market, which is very large. Um, I, I, I don't have the numbers in front of me. We'll, let, we'll do some other questions and then I will come up with the specific numbers because it's actually in our pitch deck. And then the other big market is, uh, the, is healthcare. So delivery of uh, for example, now this opportunity for, for refrigerated vaccines where we're carrying a refrigeration unit under the aircraft with the COVID vaccines when, they are, when they're available. Um, we're already getting requests in rural communities. For example, I'm in conversations with groups in Alaska that do unmanned systems where that's one of the lead applications up there is going to be transporting COVID vaccines. So these, these things are on the horizon. Uh, and then I'll come back in a few minutes with the uh, the actual market size. Okay, excellent. Um, I think we probably have time for just one more question. So I'll kick this one off with you, Archil, um, which is about military uses. I think that that's something that is top of mind from both the drone and AI industries. Um, and have you considered military uses for your, for your um, platform? And how do you think it would be used? Yeah, it's a great, this is a great question. So I'll take the AI part. So AI, uh, I, th I think the warfare that uh, will be from now to next, you know, hundreds of years will be mainly tech focused. Uh, it will be more sort of cyber warfare where 
biggest parts there will be actually who will have the most uh, and best AI tool. And even Russian President Vladimir Putin said that country with the most successful and best AI will control the world. And I actually agree that that's how it will be. So it is uh, imperative for US to uh, take a lead and retain its lead in this space because we want US to be the most important country and the most uh, successful country, both militarily and non-militarily, we want to succeed in uh, our artificial intelligence space. Great. And I, I can follow up on the drone side there. So just to finish up on the last question, the industrial logistics vertical is uh, 65 billion by 2025. Healthcare is 20 billion by 2025. And firefighting is currently 10 billion, 10 billion in the US, uh, Canada and Australia. And in terms of military applications, if you think about it, like the military is already dominated by drones. Every, you know, the, there, there's many different drone platforms that are out there. In terms of our specific technology, the military interest there is the kind of last mile logistics. And then also we're talking with some groups about doing manned, manned flight. So um, kind of like urban air mobility, but for um, moving you know, moving people around in what they're calling orbs, this, this idea of flying orbs, which is like a, it's like a one man flying car idea. Um, and then also, uh, and I think this is a more uh, near term potential customer, um, uh, the Navy, we're, we're talking with um, some high level computer science people in the, in the Navy that actually want to use our platform essentially as a mule to carry, uh, of all things, an AI uh, system that, that can coordinate multiple drones for security applications. And then eventually they would shrink it down to a smaller platform, but uh, the initial idea is to use our technology to support uh, the research. But there's, there's a lot of different military applications, mostly around logistics. Excellent. All right, well, thank you guys. Um, I wanna make sure that we leave a little bit of time for you guys to give any closing remarks um, and talk about you know, where, you, where people can go to learn more information about um, both Parallel Flight and Genesis AI. So um, I'll let you guys get started with that. Joshua, do you wanna start? Sure, yeah. So thanks everybody for coming. It's really a pleasure and, and just a lot of fun to have these conversations. Um, you can, uh, Sarah will put the, the link to our Start Engine campaign into the uh, chat. Uh, our campaign's just been open for about a month and a half. Uh, we're, we're getting pretty close to half a million dollars, so super excited about that. It's a Regulation A campaign, uh, which means it's not limited to that 1.07 like uh, Reg CF is. Uh, we're raising seven and a half million, and the... Um, uh, you know, the, the other kind of exciting part about Regulation A is just that it's, it's all been vetted by the SEC, so it's a highly vetted deal. Um, and thanks for, thanks for coming, thanks for listening. And uh, Archil, if you want to talk about your deal, I think everybody would love to hear it. For sure. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone, including Joshua and Sarah, for the great webinar and our investors and all the attendees. This is absolutely fabulous. And second, uh, our uh, campaign is on net capital. Uh, I think Sarah will post about our link and uh, we'd love to see uh, more people joining us. Our vision is AI for the people and by the people. We are looking for more participants. Together we are much, much stronger. So I hope that we together we'll build a great AI company. So really excited uh, to have these conversations and I'm sure uh, this is just the beginning. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, there are some links dropped into the chat for your reference. And we will also send an email out to everybody with a recording of this webinar later today. Thank you Great. all. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.